Hey everyone, it's Apache here and welcome back to another episode of FTB Beyond here on the Creedcraft server. This is episode 11 and today we're going to be doing a bit of tidying up, cleaning up around the base here and basically upgrading all my stuff. Um, I'm going to be doing quite a lot of auto crafting and setting up things for, for limits within refined storage. But I want to start on the bottom floor and work my way up in this episode I think. So. In here, a couple of episodes ago, we created this Woot system with uh, charge creepers in it, which collects us gunpowder, which is currently being blown up outside the window, you can see that. That's filling up our Terra Shatterer. Uh, but I want to upgrade this room a little bit. We've got plenty of room in here to be able to fit a fair few of these things. And so I want to see how many of these I can fit in, how many different mobs I can actually start uh, automatically killing. So I'm going to try and get, I think, maybe two more of the rank 1s and one of the rank 2s and see if we can fit them all in here. And so with a little bit of magic trickery, we can close the door on this, turn around, turn back and then head back in. And now you can see we have two level 2s and one level one. Now they don't look particularly good in here so I will be moving these out. They look a bit ugly in here and I think this style of kind of multi-block structure doesn't really lend itself to the, the decor that we have in here. And so I think I'll be doing a lot more kind of deco craft stuff in here and making it look really pretty and all of this kind of industrial stuff will be moved somewhere else which you'll see later on in the episode. Anyway here we have a ghast which requires a tier 2 and so I had to make a tier 2 one. Here we have a witch which surprisingly needs a tier 2. I thought that was going to be a tier 1 but nope it's a tier 2 and here we have the charged creeper which is a tier 1. So it did surprise me that a charged creeper is tier 2, sorry is tier 1 but a witch is tier 2. So, go figure. Anyway, we have um, ender chests on all of these, which are configured in the same configuration as upstairs. So on the top here, we have one white, one yellow, one white, and we have a diamond lock, which tells us that it's private instead of public. If you don't know how to use these, um, if you click on them with dye on the top, any color dye, it will change each of these um, to be a diff different configuration and if you open up one of these I'll see if I can do it across here so that you can see them if I open up one of them no nope. well, you can just see it when it closes and in the background there all of the others open as well so it creates a bit of a nice effect but it means that anything that goes into any of these will be in all of them and that means that upstairs um, they will be filtered back into the system and indeed if we have a look in here now for gas tears you can see we've already got 35 gas tears so that's really good anyway should we move on to the next project okay so the next project I want to show you is a bit of base expansion that I've done and so I haven't really done anything down on this ground floor here or on the first floor at all here but I did notice when I was putting the lighting in that it has created this really nice kind of bat effect on the floor. And so we'll be kitting this room out soon with some display stands and pedestals and all sorts. But I just really like this, this bat which is on the floor here. But I just wanted to show you that very quickly. The place I have been doing a lot of work though, so you can see we've got some elevators here. And so I've been digging out the cellar. And I've been digging out quite far as well. So if we go down here, I press shift to go down, you can see I've kitted out this downstairs with living rock all the way around. And I've got a screen in here with a lift down to the laboratory. And the laboratory is all the way down here. And oh my goodness, it's spread. This is a very, very weird bug that I have found. Down here, I've put all of this painted glowstone in to make it light up really well and I've covered the walls in uh, laboratory bricks all the way up but for some reason 
and I have no idea why or what it's about at all but there are these things keep happening where this bedrock is supposed to be um, flat all the way across all the way across the entire world at this level here but for some reason in this basement now that I've uncovered it all these blocks keep removing themselves this was completely flat with bedrock underneath it and this just keeps happening I have no idea why if anybody knows why this is happening why chunks of bedrock bedrock keep disappearing and it's in a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube I've found because I where was it this one here I think one of these two was the original one that happened and I put a pillar all the way up with cobblestone to see how much would be deleted and it came up I, don't, I haven't got any blocks on me at the moment so I'll go just raise back up here and I'll grab some blocks uh, to better visualize it so if I just grab some cobblestone and head back down so this actually gets rid of stuff that is really weird you can see this disappears and then if I place one above it that doesn't disappear so I can't put anything in these things in, in here it's not any kind of spawn protection at all but that's working I don't understand this at all hmm I, I, I don't know what's happening here if anybody knows please let me know because I can't really work like this at all uh, and I can't really use this area down here if things are just going to be disappearing but anyway this is the area I've been digging out and um, filling in and doing all sorts with down here over the last couple of days if we head up here you can see I've got an elevator here I've added in two just for symmetry sake because it's an, an even section here and this is quite clear glass the one thing I don't like about this quite clear glass is well underneath here and it looks like it's spread no 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 that's okay <laughs> it's just for where the cobblestone was looked like it had spread even more so underneath here you can see there's exposed bedrock here because this goes down flush to the floor and also this connected texture um, stops as well when whilst the elevator is moving so I'm not too keen on that this area here I had planned to kind of dig channels into the sides of the walls as well to be able to expand out to the sides and have a load of machines all the way in, in the centre of here and the whoop system we saw upstairs a while ago or in the last scene um, I was going to have them kind of along the walls here and one of the two things I do want in this room or at this level at least are the um, in, the two environmental tech miners the ore miner and the resource miner so they will be going in here at some point and we will head back up now that's really bugging me that stuff don't know why it's happening and I can't use this section until I found out what it is and how to get rid of it so that, that's kind of messed up some of what I was going to do for this episode actually because I was going to try start working on the environmental tech stuff but as you can see it was this one which is now looks like it's okay again but these three have opened up now and it's it's just weird and I can't chance having machines down there that need to be working and parts of it disappear and get get deleted so yeah please let me know if you know anything about that um so yeah let's head back up and we will get on with something else just before we carry on today i've logged on here on my camera accounts this account is opt on the server and so I'm in creative mode at the moment and I'm just going to try and fill these in with bedrock and with painted glowstone to see if they if they can actually fix it within creative and I want to do this on camera so that you guys know that I'm not cheating anything I'm just trying to fix the mess which is 
uh, a bug or a glitch with something in the game and I'm not playing around with bedrock and stuff that I really shouldn't be in survival and so it's just a, a matter of kind of uh, I don't know just trying to trying to fix what's what's happened and it looks like I can no I can't even put stuff in in creative mode into these things I can put them in here and I can try and fix up as much as I can but this one and this one are messed up so you can see it really is a, a huge bug in the game um, that I have no idea about and it seems to be spreading there was one and then there was another one here and now there's two here so whether this is just going to spread throughout the server I have no idea um, so yeah but I just wanted to show you me filling in those in creative with my camera account just so that you know I'm not cheating <laughs> so I will come back later and show you how much of this um, whether it's spread again or not and I will keep checking on this throughout the uh, upcoming episodes to see if there is anything I can do with it. The part of the base that I've been doing the most work on over the last couple of days is actually up in the eaves here and it's the bit we'll be spending most of the rest of the episode on as well. Now remember I had a big wall across the back and stuff and I have expanded that now to create this huge wall across here um, which is an auto crafting wall with the crafters and detectors at the moment I have got all the solderers along here and I need to put the things into the um, the item frames above but in here we have the printed silicon and then we have the, um, the printed basic processors and the basic processors and so on and so forth for the gold, the um, uh, diamond and also we have speed upgrades here which are being automatically crafted and so these detectors allow you to keep a certain amount in the system at any one time basically it auto crafts up to that level or make sure you have a, a surplus of stuff in the in the system and so I've taken down most of the rest of this because it's all going to be changing around I had uh, a few machines here which will be moving as well and I've got all of this empty space here and so these are um, importers down here and I've got a line of chisel and bits in front of them to make it all nice and flush and I've also created um, on the balcony here a little door in the back so that we can go in to the back of it and we can see the back and so you can see all of the importers across there all of the crafters across here and I've got this is actually a conduit facade so that I can put energy conduits down here and I will grab some of those now I can't remember if I've already put them in or not so let's have a look yeah you can see here now that I've got it in my hand this turns transparent so you can see I've got energy conduits running all the way across this line as well they don't need them on the back of the solderers but there may come a time where I want to take those solderers out and I may as well have this conduit here in the back anyway. So I've also got a network receiver here and a crafting grid just to keep all of this online. And my main idea with this quite large room at the back here is to have this as my kind of my uh, server room here within this space. And because this base is going to be kind of my main base of operations for quite a long time, I'm going to kit this server room out properly um, until we actually move into a, uh, a different base, if we even do that. We may use this as our main base of operations for the whole series. You don't, you never know. Depends on what happens. And so along this back wall here, and this might seem a bit over... Um, kind of over indulgent but I want to have I want to sort out my system back there and so I will have my controller in this corner here and then 
um, with with a flux point on it. And then I want to have um, a line all the way along here of um, disk drives full of storage or full of disks, full of uh, 64k disks each. And then on the top here, I want to future proof the, the whole system and have a whole line of network transmitters. And so that whenever I want to set up a new sub network, I can just make a network receiver, I can make a network card, and I can go out to the base wherever it needs to be, right click on the receiver with the network card, and then come back here and stick it into a spare one of the transmitters. And so Amin will have, I think it's 29 across here, I think it is, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. But we'll have a huge amount of sub-networking space available. It makes it a lot easier with refined storage than it does with um, something like Applied Energistics 2, which is the subnetting in that is a bit more complicated because uh, you use channels and stuff like that. You can only have a certain amount of things on different subnetworks or on different on the same cables. So you have to chain different subnetworks together, which can get a bit complicated. Now, I've got a checklist on the wall here, and this is the alloy furnace automation I want to do. And if I make some space, I can take this off the wall so you can see it a bit clearer. So you can see I want electrical steel, energetic alloy, vibrant alloy, pulsating iron, dark steel, solarium, bronze ingots, enderium ingots, and electro ingots. I want all of those automated so that I've always got some in stock. I also want to have sag mill automation with silicon, gravel and sand. And I also want to have uh, slice and splice with Z-Logic controllers and ender resonators. And I always want to have ender crystals on um, in surplus. And also I want to be able to have enderman soul vials. Um, not necessarily on surplus, but um, for the beginning, I definitely want a surplus of soul vial or Endman soul vials. And so there's a, there's a lot to do here. I have started some of it because I have crafted, if we have a look in here for alloy smelters, I've created 10 of these. And so I think, should we start over here so that I know exactly where we are? Over here, I want to put in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these, I think it is because we have nine things on this clipboard that we want to automate. And so I'm going to go through um, off camera now, just so that it's, it's complicated recipes and stuff, nested recipes and all sorts. I've got to put it all into that. So I'm going to go through and put the recipes into these and I'll come back and show you exactly what that has, what that looks like. Okay, so now we've got all the recipes here and one of each of the actual ingots. I'm not going to do Enderium for now. You can see I've got it crossed here, off here. It's a bit later game than we are at the moment. And so I'm going to leave it off the list for now. Um, there's still a, a few other components. I need to make Enderium base and stuff like that for to actually get to that stage. So that will be at a later date. So I've taken one of these out and we can add them in as and when we need them basically. And so what we need to do with this is we'll start at this end and we will put the electrum ingot pattern into here. I will say I want to have um, always have a stack of enderium on hand at any one time. Sorry of electrum at any one time. And then we, I'll, I'll put these in at the end uh, on the item frames. And you can see this is already starting to produce the enderium, sorry, the electrum for us. I've got enderium on the mind at the moment. And so in the next one, we put in the bronze. And on here, I always want a stack of bronze. And then this should start kicking in. And the same with this. A few of these I think will already have enough in the system so that it won't automatically start going for it. But 
most of them I think I don't have many of at the moment so it's just building up my supplies for me as we're actually going and so the vibrant alloy is next and this vibrant alloy actually takes this um, energetic alloy as part of its uh, recipe so the more vibrant alloy we make the less of the energetic alloy will have and it will need to catch up um that's half of them done the next one is pulsating iron and the reason why i'm trying to get all of these specific ones is because they're used in the different conduits so the pulsating iron is used for i think it is energy sorry the item conduits and the vibrant alloy is used for the um energy conduits and also for capacitors and the oct octadic capacitors as well which I will be creating to put in all of these machines. I don't particularly need them they only need to run every so often to build up my supplies but I do want basically I, I can use them so why wouldn't I is, is my my thoughts and feelings on it. So nearly done, that is the solarium, now it is the electrical steel, so we want 64 of these, and finally it is the dark steel, and I've got quite a lot of dark steel at the moment, because uh, I've been building up various different things to keep my armor in check i've got dark steel armor on we'll be upgrading this as well in the next possibly next episode um to see what upgrades we can put onto it so that is yeah the dark steel 64 and that should be everything going and so now if we put the electrum in here we can put that up on to there then the bronze then the um, energetic alloy, the vibrant alloy, pulsating iron, solarium, electrical steel and dark steel. And you can see the detectors on top, the ones which are lit up are the ones which are working. Uh, they tell the, the crafters, which is on all, uh, trigger auto crafting with redstone signal, this is toggled to yes. And then the crafters tell the alloy smelters to work and will export the required items into uh, into here and then we, when, once it's finished it will suck up via these importers back into the system. So that is all of the alloy smelters done. Shall we see now if we can get the sag mills and the slice and splices working. And here we are, we have four sag mills here, one doing pulverized coal, which is needed for the, uh, was it the dark steel and a couple of other things here. We've got silicon, which comes from sand, sand, which comes from gravel, and gravel, which comes from cobblestone. I've also got Z-Logic controllers in a slice and splice, and I've got these, um, was it the ender resonators, I think it is, um, in a slice and splice as well. And I have ender crystals in a soul binder here. This soul binder requires these soul vials and it also requires XP. So we'll be sorting a some stuff out with this next episode with ender tanks and stuff. So this isn't currently working, but it will do soon. And over here, I've had to do the capturing of the uh, enderman like this because... I found that trying to put it up here with this trying to keep a surplus of them actually caused the entire server to crash for some reason. I have no idea why or what's happening with it but this is one of the bugs we've been having on the server recently but we've been having a lot of crashes and, and uh, it's we've had one day of uptime in the last three or four days so there's been a lot going wrong and one of the things I have found through elimination is that if you try to auto craft with these powered spawners using an automated recipe then the server times out and crashes uh, it may be solved in the next update hopefully 
um, but we never know. I'd like to say I've spoken a lot about crashes and issues and bugs within this episode. And I'd like to remind people this is a actively developed pack. This is still being actively developed. And a lot of the stuff in here is very new. It's still being tested. So I wouldn't worry too much about the, the crashes. It may mean that we have a bit less playtime than, than we really want. and might not be able to get episodes out as often as possible. But actually going through and working out how these bugs happen and what is actually causing them is good for the pack. It's good for you guys as well who are following on at home. And I hope you are as well. I hope you're enjoying this pack if you're playing it. And this will allow you to not have the same crashes that, that we've had. Uh, I have had a look downstairs just before I started recording and one of the holes has come back down in the basement. So that is another thing I'm going to have to go through and try and debug. Um, probably on the server side of things, have a look at the, the logs and go through and try and work out what's happening. Um, so it's taken me probably about 24 hours to get to this stage from the last cut that I did. So I really want to get this episode out to you guys. I'm going to try and keep them every other day or so. I really want to try and get at least three episodes out a week of, of this pack. So I hope you don't mind if I cut the episode off here. You've seen everything that I've done today. We've got a lot of the core infrastructure stuff put in with these. We've got a surplus of all of these materials now. I need to get zombie heads and I need to get enderman heads. And so I think between this episode and next episode I will build up two farms. I will build up an enderman farm in the end and I will build up a zombie farm or at least get a zombie powered spawner set up so I can swap out uh, in my decapitation farm. So. That's what I'll be doing between this episode and next. And then we'll talk a bit more about some automation stuff next episode. Try and get these things filled in. And then we will move on from refined storage to something else pretty big. So I want to save that for next episode. So thank you very much for joining me today. And I will see you next time. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please like, comment and subscribe on the video and to the channel. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking and commenting on the videos. Thanks. See you next time.